this is this is absolutely the best. Yesterday, after Cassidy Hutchinson testified that Donald Trump knew and wanted armed people at his rally on January 6th, that Donald Trump assaulted a Secret Service agent, tried to commandeer his vehicle to go to the Capitol, threw food at the wall, leaving a stain of ketchup having to be cleaned up by a number of different people. After all these things happened and the testimony was extraordinary, Fox News was completely in shambles. First of all, there's a moment where it's just a silence. They don't nobody knows what to say. Nobody has any idea what to say. It's the most delightful, awkward silence I've ever seen on Fox News. We always point out that there's not a pushback and it would have been great to hear Jim Jordan or some congressman say some other angle to this. But the testimony in and of itself is really, really powerful. Sandra, can you, start? <laughs> uh, you take this one, Sandra. I don't know. Uh, it, 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 just the most ing- and the smirk on Brett Bayer's face about like, where do we go from here really says it all. Indeed. Yes, I am here. <laughs> no, Brett, uh, to your point, I just wonder for the for the country watching this in this moment, uh, how much this changes what people believed or did not believe. Right. Aside from it being compelling, I mean, does it even really matter at this point in time? Now, Brett Bayer then making a very good point he, here. He makes a good point, and it's a point I've made er, on this program as well. Cassidy Hutchinson is there in front of the bright lights under oath while Trump is posting to his social media platform. Truth, essential. Exactly. That, that from hearing it firsthand, she says uh, that both of those men requested pardons from the president. I think what you pointed to, Sandra, was uh, the most uh, compelling when she quotes Mark Meadows saying, uh, Pat, you heard the president. He doesn't care. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong as far as they're literally literally calling for the vice president to be hung. And then Pat Cipollone says this is effing crazy, according to Hutchinson. This testimony was very compelling from beginning to end. She obviously had access to all of the players. True. We are now hearing from the former president on various posts where he questions her uh, Accuracy. He goes after her directly, says he doesn't know who she is and said he didn't lunge at the Secret Service agent in the beast. Uh, that didn't happen. He says he didn't throw his lunch against the wall. That didn't happen <laughs> and that she's lying. Cassie Hutchinson is under oath on Capitol Hill. Um, the president is on Truth Social uh, making his statements. What was so compelling, I think. <laughs> uh, hard to argue. I mean, that, he, that's absolutely true. And Fox News just completely unclear on how to cover this in the immediate aftermath. Now, later in the show, we'll look at what the primetime lineup did with the testimony. They were ready with a smear campaign against Cassidy Hutchinson. They were ready to go. But in the immediate aftermath, in the immediate aftermath, they didn't know how how do we what do we do here? And Brett Bayer admitting this is some of the most jaw dropping testimony ever to take place in the world of American politics. I've covered politics for a long time. I don't think there's been testimony like this that is kind of jaw dropping in a way on the inside workings of a White House in True. crisis after, you know, at this moment in January 6th that we've seen in since Watergate. Right. And he's absolutely correct. So by the end of this news hour, They were starting to put together their reaction plan and Martha McCallum shows up towards the end of the show and uh, sort of just starts to downplay the significance of the testimony. This was the first step in kind of minimizing it. Later in the evening, Fox News went full out smear campaign on Cassidy Hutchinson. We'll get to that. But here's Martha McCallum trying to run a little bit of interference. I would say, John, uh, you know, I'd agree with um, what you all have just been talking about. But I I would say that we had sort of the basic parameters of what happened with regard Ah. to this. We had heard before that the president wanted to go to the Capitol. And And understand the strategy here is all along when we were hearing these things, they were denying that they were true. Now that the testimony has gotten so specific and explosive from people so close to Trump, now they go, 
these aren't even really new revelations. Well, you denied the revelations were accurate originally. Pushback against that. So what we're getting today are a lot of details and fill in into yes. just how dramatic that whole situation was. Um, I think that she comes across very credible. She has a good memory for all of these different conversations that were being had. And, and clearly the description of what happened in the beast, which is the president's vehicle, of course, um, of him, you know, wanting to lunge toward the steering wheel, according to this account from Bobby, who was the uh, security secret service person who was in the vehicle, who she says was very shaken up afterwards. The question is, um, you know, all of this is obviously riveting. It's, it's very dramatic. It was clearly um, a very uh, difficult day for, for her and for those who were involved, right. uh, and for everybody who witnessed it, I would add. But the question is, in terms of, of the Department of Justice, do, does it move the ball at all on any legal action that they could pursue, or is it sort of an overall uh, filling in the gaps, filling in the story that has an impact on whether or not the former president decides to run again and whether or not any of these details uh, impact people's feelings about that all around. Right. Even if it's all true, even though we downplayed it and denied it all along, and even if Donald Trump was a completely unhinged authoritarian madman, hell bent on keeping a presidency that he didn't actually win and indifferent to the potential hanging of his vice president, even if all of that is true, which we ran interference for for the last year and a half. Does it really matter at this point, guys? Uh, an incredible, incredible way to downplay it. And just remember, they had five hours to get organized before primetime hit later on last night. And after the break, we will look at what became a concerted and calculated smear campaign against Cassidy Hutchinson. That's after the break. If you're just listening today and you want to check out video of these clips that I've been playing for you, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. You can find us on Instagram at David Pakman show. One of our sponsors today is Helix Sleep, and it's a sponsor I'm thrilled about because I sleep on a Helix mattress at home and it's just the perfect mattress. One of the best things about Helix is you don't have to guess which mattress do I need, which one will be good for me. You take their famous sleep quiz on their website. You tell them your body type, your sleeping position, your back pain issues you might have, and they will pair you with a mattress that will be perfect for you. I took the sleep quiz. The mattress they suggested was exactly what I needed. I often get too hot at night. The mattress keeps me cool. It's not too soft. It's not too firm. The texture is right. And I've just been getting way better sleep. You only buy a mattress every decade or so. Don't get stuck with something that's not perfect for you. And all Helix mattresses come with a 10 year warranty and they'll even come to your house and pick it up within 100 days if you don't love it. But I think you will. For a limited time, Helix is offering up to three hundred and fifty dollars off all mattress orders, plus two free pillows at Helix sleep dot com slash Pacman. It's the biggest discount they've ever offered. The link is down below.